Hello, my beautiful Scorpio friends, and welcome to your horoscope for May of 2020. And Scorpio, the eighth house, which is the house that you naturally rule, it is in full power this month. So much going on over there, which means that this is a good month that you can do Scorpio-esque things, declutter, detox, um, reinvent, transform, get deep about these things. Definitely look at some investments, investments in intimacy, vulnerability, connections with other people. This is a wonderful month for that. So I think it's going to be an interesting time. Not to mention we've got 40% of our planets moving into a retrograde fashion. So things are going to slow down. And I think you can feel the intensity. Really, probably, I feel like Scorpio, for you, you've maybe even had like kind of your eye on that since the end of April as we've started to come into May. But that will become a little bit more intense as we get midway through the month. Now, one of the other things I want to bring your attention to right at the beginning of the video is the fact that one of your ruling planets Pluto has gone retrograde and it did so back in April but as it continues April for as it continues April as it continues retrograde from April over the next five months this is in your first house so this is a time where honestly this idea of your own self-confidence the goals that you have for yourself the way that you're presenting yourself there is a piece of you over this next five months that is literally phoenixing right you're going back over it what do you want how do you want to be seen how are you ready to show up in the world what are the goals that you have pieces of you are dying off under this retrograde and you've been moving towards this next evolution of yourself as this scorpio energy but now you're going back to see what things can stay and what things need to shed so if you feel a little bit more indecisive about some things this month or over the next handful of months while Pluto is in retrograde I just want to give you a little bit of permission and say totally cool totally okay completely expected right and that doesn't mean that you're not having a good time it doesn't mean that life is on pause even with all of the retrogrades it just means a phoenix thing is certainly happening for you okay Let's jump in here and talk about what's going on this month. Right at the beginning of the month, we're having a full moon on the 7th in the energy of Scorpio. So right there in your sign. Now, the first house is not only just the house of the self, right? my identity, how I identify myself, my external circumstances, the way that I, I decorate things, but it's also the home of the body, right? So as this full moon is happening, the full moon brings the action of needing to um, acknowledge something, end something, or make an adjustment to something about who you are in your first house. So this is literally a time where I, I feel like the word goals is so big for you this month, because it's going to bring your attention to your deepest desires, your deepest struggles. It's going to bring your attention with your um, struggles to get to the desired whatever. Maybe this even looks like, I mean, you've got energy over in the sixth house, right? So this could be, um, are you, do you have a desired body or do you have a desired perception that you'd like to, or personification of yourself you'd like to put out there and you're struggling to get to that, right? Are you struggling with the transition of life? Just because we're getting older and we're having these experiences doesn't mean that we're always doing them as easily and as gracefully as we'd like to. What is it in you that has this deep desire that is asking for your attention at this full moon? Let me know about that in the comment section down below. I would love to see what's happening for you, Scorpios, okay? Now, on the 11th, we've got a busy day. First of all, we've got Mercury moving into the energy of Gemini. Now he's at home, he's in rulership and domicile here. Completely wonderful, lighting up the eighth house space, right? So the eighth house, again, will be a house of power for you this month. But as Mercury moves into Gemini into this space, you're a better communicator here. We've had a full moon that has asked you about some goals and things like that. So now in the eighth house where we have joint resources, we have either joint finances, maybe even your partner's money is happening over here. There's vulnerability, there's healing, there's a lot going on with maybe even some flirting and some romance over here, Mercury makes you a great communicator over here to talk to people to talk about this area of your life. I do think if this has a romantic capacity to it, um, I wouldn't be surprised if you're interested in really different kind of people. Right? This is not the month where if you meet somebody, you have to jump in and heavily commit. Gemini's here. He's like, yeah, I'm enjoying this. Yes, let's let's have a cyber coffee. Yes, let's hang out sometime. But you don't have to fully invest here because this isn't an entirely emotional energy, but it is an energy of investigation. So whether it be your finances, your partner's finances, a romance, therapy, enjoy the investigative energy here. But the eighth house is certainly going to be sped up. So one of the conversations you may be having or decisions that you 
may be making with Mercury here, because Mercury likes to make decisions, is about um, what needs to stay and what needs to go, right? Like, does this help me grow and learn? What's my perception of this? And can I shed it if it's not serving me? Certainly, that'll be a useful energy. Now, also on the 11th, we see Saturn stepping into his retrograde all the way until September. Now, Saturn is going to begin the retrograde at one degree of Aquarius. So just over here, he's just started to light up this fourth house space. You've seen some social things around the home, family, real estate, property, maybe even working from home. It could have even brought ideas of working for yourself or how you work socially. Maybe, you know, we've had a pandemic. Are you wanting to just work from home? Something like that. But certainly things in the family dynamic, you've started to feel the rumbles of a shift that's going to be made here as Saturn fully moves in there at the end of the year. But Saturn is going to continue that retrograde and go back into Capricorn that you've been working on for two and a half, three years, right? So it's going to go back to this communication space for you. So as Saturn is in the retrograde, what we're doing is he's asking you to get serious, right? Get serious about the lessons you've learned in this communication sector of your life with your siblings, with your perception, with your teaching, with your learning, um, with how you just communicate with other people. Have you built a solid enough foundation that you can stand on it? Because Saturn wants you to understand that the ways that you do things, the way that you say things, the information that you consume or you put out there has an impact on other people. And are you handling this in a mature way, right? I think it's really important during this time that he's going to ask you to reevaluate this. And that can be, depending on where this placement sits for you, could also be, are you asking for what you want and for what you need? And are you engaging with content that is um, intellectually stimulating for you as well as taking you to that next level? So keep me posted on that one as well, okay? On the 13th, also a busy day, we see Mars moving into the energy of Pisces and we see Venus stepping into her retrograde. Now, Mars in the energy of Pisces here is going to light up the fifth house space for you. And I actually love this energy. Mars is action, movement, assertion, we're boots on the ground, we're doing things. But he's also about desire, right? Like, what do I want? And in Pisces, he's like, I don't know. I want to just be. Let's just go with it for a minute, right? I want to be creative. I want to sing. I want to dance. I want to have joy in the fifth house. I want to play. I want to, I want to have some passion, right? I want to speak. Um, I want to speak romance. I want to speak the language of romance. I want to speak the language of creativity. Maybe you're just rocking out to the oldies. You're in the jam. You know, you're in your space. Mars works beautifully over there in that energy. What Mars does not do well in this energy is really get out there and fight for what you want, right? Like he's not pushing an agenda over here. Although Mars is the energy of conflict. So truly in this fifth house area, if there's something that needs some resolution, um, you can, Mars can bring that to the surface, right? Are you being passive aggressive about something and it's asking you to step into that? Or where are you pushing something off to the side? You're not wanting to confront it directly. And Mars is like, nope, we need to go do that. So you may experience a little bit of that in this fifth house area as well. So if it has to do with your children or your level of joy, maybe even a romance, because remember romance is kind of walking between the worlds this month. Just keep an eye on that energy, okay? As Venus begins her retrograde, she's going to begin at 21 degrees of Gemini and she's going to end at 5 degrees of Gemini. So as this retrograde is happening, first of all, it is again in the 8th house. So this is a, a the 8th house energy here may be asking you with Venus retrograde to let go of what is no longer valuable, right? Venus is an energy of value. It's the value of relationships. It's the value of money. It's the value of the things that we value. In your 8th house, is it time to just clean house, right? Is that relationship still serving you and are you serving that relationships are both of you getting your needs met whether this is a romantic relationship whether this is a relationship in connection to maybe a loan or a bank or another place that shares joint resources for you is the value here is everybody getting what they need also i think it will ask you too in relationships are you doing most of the work right? If it's only a one-sided relationship, Venus is going to bring your attention to this pretty heavily. But if it's just that you need to rebalance because maybe you are the one who needs to show up a little bit more or show more vulnerability in the eighth house, right? There needs to be a little bit of an opening here. Do a little bit of healing here. This is the eighth house. Whatever it is, I feel like the quality of detoxing in a retrograde, go back over re-edit, revise, review, look at these things and see the value of them here in this eighth house space for yourself, okay? On the 14th, Jupiter is going to step into his retrograde and he'll be retrograde all the way until September 13th. So Jupiter is going to start off the retrograde here at 27 degrees of Capricorn and he's going to back 
all the way up to 18 degrees of Capricorn, so solidly in the Capricorn energy. But this is going to be again in the third house space. So one of the things that Jupiter retrograde does is make us adjust and, and address and get honest about the fact of our strengths or our weaknesses. So Scorpio, in terms of conversation, in terms of that writing that you want to do, maybe you want to be an author, in terms of your website, in terms of your relationship with your neighbors, your siblings, maybe something... Um, that has some documentation attached to it. What are your strengths? What are your weaknesses? The wisdom of Jupiter here in this retrograde is for you to go back over where you've been presenting to be really confident about something, but you actually need more help. You need training. You need that guru to come in and help you see things, third house, perceive things, third house, a different way because he's trying to help you be solid here. So I think the question that I think of at this particular Jupiter retrograde is, is your communication effective? So look at that particular piece of information as we travel during this retrograde, okay? On the 20th, we're gonna have the sun come into the energy of Gemini, and on the 22nd, we're going to welcome in a new moon in the energy of Gemini, so the eighth house is going. So I'm telling you, if it's that you wanted to detox in some way, you wanted to clear out things, you want an area of your life to transform, maybe even your partner's finances are transforming and it ends up being good for you as well or impacting you in some way um astrologically you know are you studying this is gemini energy who likes to study at the new moon anything is possible all avenues are absolutely lit up you just need to make the request to see the fresh start or have the fresh perspective in order to walk that thing forward but the sun being here for four weeks also means you are highly motivated in this particular area to have this be the regenerative the transformative place that it can be for you. As we end this month on the 28th, 29th, depending on where you live, Mercury is going to move into the energy of Cancer. Now, I do want to make one small note before I tell you about that. On the 17th, Mercury is going to move into the position that Venus is in, and it's called out of bounds, which means that if you are looking to communicate, if you are looking to detox, if you are looking to have this revolution, revelation in your eighth house, you may be looking outside of your normal sources or resources, right? You're going to go out of bounds. Your thinking may be out of bounds where you're like, wow, I've never thought of it that, for, but that way before. Or I would have never thought of collaborating or connecting with this particular energy. Go out of bounds. That's where Mercury is actually taking you. Now, as Mercury moves into the energy of Cancer, this is going to light up your ninth house space, which is beautifully expansive. My college students, this is all you. He's here to help you absorb and transmit this energy, but also to get any support you need. Whether you're in college, you're doing a training, you're learning, whatever it is you're doing, if you've needed extra support, Mercury is going to bring that in here. And he comes from an, an emotional response, right? You make a decision based out of an emotional response. I'm stuck here. I need more information. Or, oh my God, I'm so excited. I want to share this. Either way, you find the support that you need but it comes from I think the emotions welling up and then we're able to talk about think about share and make decisions from that place which ultimately help us publish market broadcast expand out publish that YouTube channel because you're like I've got something to say the ancestors are speaking to me history is speaking to me I've got something to share so it's a really beautiful useful energy and it could also have you just communicating more with the family as well since um, cancer is a family sign as well okay all right, Scorpios, I think it's going to be a great month. I hope you will join me in watching the um, collaborations that are happening on these channels. I am calling it the Eat and Greet. So we have another astrologer come over to the Cyber House. And not only are we going to talk about topics, but we're also going to teach some skills. That was a really big, important thing for me is that I also want to bring you some astrology technique so that you can practice the skill within your own practice, no matter where you are in your study, right? Because astrology in itself is, is beautiful, but it is technical as well. So we want to teach you to do these things as well as just listening to um, how they get done. So if you're interested in that, I hope you'll show up. We've had Sasha Benedetti over, Nadia Shaw coming up as Terrence Gardino, Gemini Brett will be here, um, Elizabeth Grace, Patrick Arundel. They're getting lined up. People are saying yes to come to the Cyber House and sit with us. So I can't wait to have you guys there. All right, you guys like this video, comment, share, subscribe, and I look forward to seeing you next month. Bye, Scorpio.